Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mathematical Literacy Webinar for Grade 11 learners. We will begin shortly. I am just going to allow for a few more minutes so that the majority or the rest of the learners can um, join and register this webinar. So please be patient. We will begin shortly. Okay, I do think that the majority of the learners are ready to start. So without further ado, my name is Kimberly Britz. I'm the Educational Specialist for Mathematical Literacy. Uh, just some basics before we continue. If you are struggling to hear me, make sure your audio is on and your speaker volume is turned up. You will automatically be muted when joining this session. Should you have any questions, you can ask your question in the question box below or on your right or raise your hand. To raise your hand, click the icon on your dashboard below or on your right. Download this presentation and additional resources in the handout box below or on your right. You will also find all this information in the question box below or on your right. Remember to send us your questions. Attendees are encouraged to ask questions and leave comments. However, irrelevant or inappropriate comments will result in the attendee being dismissed from the session. If we did not get to your question, please send an email to academics at impact.co.za. Questions in the question box will be answered and made available afterwards. If you did not receive the questions and answers, please send an email to info at impact.co.za visit the IMPACT YouTube channel for recordings of this session. Please just also take note that um, our webinar sessions will now also be available on our webpage, so on impact.co.za. You can go and have a look. The, the recordings of the webinars will also be made available there, so no longer only on YouTube can you find them, but also on the webpage. Then, as you may notice, for those of you who have been following the webinars for a few weeks now, we are making use of a new program today. So I ask that you guys are patient as we um, try and, and um, use this new program to help you guys further. So for today, we are going to be covering a past exam paper, a June examination paper. So just for um, for you guys to be able to see all the, the questions and the calculations clearly, I am going to switch off my video cam so that you can use the majority of your screen space to follow along as we work through this paper. Okay, so all of you should still be able to hear me loud and clear, but no longer see me. Now for today, we are going to be covering a mathematical literacy paper one, and it's a June examination from 2019. Now, as you will all see, this paper has a time allocation of an hour and a half, and it's also counting 75 marks. So please be aware, we only have an hour to our availability. So some questions I am going to rush a little bit quicker through them in order for us to still have, um, cover the entire uh, paper as much as we can during this session. 
then I am also going to try and um, translate some of the questions and calculations in Afrikaans just to accommodate all our Afrikaans learners. So for the Afrikaans leerders, I can here and there vraagstellings, termen as ook bewerkings vir julle vertaal so that julle ook kan bijhou met wat ons vandag bespreek. For all the learners, please download the examination paper and memorandum from myimpact.co.za and you will be able to download it there from the exam resources. It is available in both English and Afrikaans. Alternatively, today's paper and memorandum is in the handout or available in the handout section for the Afrikaans leaders. Die opdracht of die, die papier, die vraagstel, as ook die memorandum is op myimpact.co.za in Afrikaans beskikbaar onder die um, exam resources, as ook in die handout box van hierdie webinar. So jy kan dit daar ook vir hierdie sessie gaan aflaai. Then please be aware that all alternative methods are included in the memorandum, which is available in the handout section. So if we go through today's questions and there is a question or two where you feel like you would have calculated the, the answers differently, please refer to the memo for all those alternative solutions. Okay, so for some of the, the questions, I am going to make the questions a bit larger and smaller, but for this one and the purpose of drawing a graph, I will read through all the questions for you and try and um, follow along as much as you can. Question one. Henny and his friends decide to plan a Cape holiday. They will fly to Cape Town, then hire a car to travel around with. Here are the options they can choose from. So over here is Joshua's taxi service, and over here is Mia's car hire service. Those are the two possible options for them. Then you will see that for Joshua's taxi service, it is a tariff of 36 rand per kilometer. For Mia's car hire, the tariff is a once-off fee of 150 rand, and then an additional 32 rand per kilometer. For the Afrikaans leerders, here is now the two options where Henny and his maats uh, can use Joshua's taxi dienst, which is 36 rand per kilometer, is, and Mia's car hier dienst, which is a one-off fee of 150 rand, and also a 32 rand per additional kilometer. For the Afrikaans learners, for the Afrikaans leerders, just be aware that you will see in the um, turquoise color here, there are some of the terms and question statements already translated for you and highlighted highlighted in a, a light blue turquoise color. So please, if you're not if you're unsure of the question statement, just refer to those highlighted sections and make use of those um, translations. Question 1.1. Complete the following table for both services on the answer sheet provided. You may use the following formula to use uh, to work out the tariff for Mia's car hire. Now, extremely important, guys, that um, you make use of the formula provided here. So they give it to you just to um, help and assist you. And if you are not going to make use of it, you might um, actually lose marks because you're going to make use of wrong calculations. Now, let's start off. Just to save some space, we are not going to use the answer sheet, but I'm going to use the table right below the question statement. So, for Joshua's taxi service costs. Over here, you can see. Now, he charges 36 rand per kilometer. So if he travels, if you uh, hire his taxi and you travel zero kilometer, you will pay zero rand because you pay for, uh, for every kilometer you travel. If you travel 10 kilometers, you are going to multiply the number of kilometers, mol the you feel like kilometers, with the tariff. So mol the kilometers medi tarifan 36 rand. So 10 multiplied by 36 is going to give you an answer of 360. If you travel 50 kilometers, 50 times 36 is going to give you an answer of 1,800. If you travel 100 kilometers, it's going to give you an answer of 3,600. 
And if you travel 150 kilometers, 150 multiplied by 36 gives you an answer of 5,400 rand. Now for Mia's car hire service. So for Mia's car hire serv service, it is extremely important to know that there is a once off fee included, which means that regardless if you use the car to travel or not, you are still going to pay 150 Rand. So you will see she travels zero kilometers, but she still has to pay, or Henny and his friends still have to pay 150 Rand. Now you are going to make use of this formula highlighted in yellow. The total cost, the total cost equals to 150 Rand plus 32 Rand multiplied by the number of kilometers. So the total cost is like 150 Rand plus 32 Rand for me to fill the hoeveelheid kilometers that bestuur word. So if we take this 10 kilometers and we substitute it into our formula, it's going to be 150 plus 32 times 10 which gives us an answer of 470. Then we are gonna take this 50 and substitute it into our formula, which gives us an answer of 1,750. For 100 kilometers, we are gonna make use of the exact same formula and that gives you an answer of 3,350. For 150 kilo kilometers, if you substitute that 150 into the number of kilometers, then you are going to get an answer of 4,950. Okay, so quite simple and straightforward. And guys, this is going to count 10 marks towards your total. So it's quite simple, it's quite straightforward, but it counts a lot of marks. Question 1.2. Draw a graph of Joshua's taxi service costs compared to Mia's car hire cost on the answer sheet provided and also provide a name for your graph and label the axis. For the Afrikaans, vergelijk die twee taxi dienste dier a grafiek te skets. Maak seker jou grafiek sa asse word benoem as ook a hoof opskrif vir jou grafiek. So guys, here is the answer sheet to our right. So let's quickly go and we start off with our heading. Now, since I write quite large here, I am only going to say, let's say Joshua. Versus. Mia's. OK, now for a appropriate and for a heading that is going to give you a word of full marks, something like Joshua's taxi service costs compared to Mia's car hire costs. Okay, so that would be a great heading for your graph. On the y-axis, we are going to look at the costs in Rand. On the x-axis, it is going to be the distance in kilometers. Okay, and then let's say our key, blue for Joshua, and then we'll make Mia's, the graph representing Mia's cost, we'll draw in red. Now, please have a look here at the bottom of our graph. Just to save us some time, I already went beforehand and calculated um, the costs for each distance. All right, I'm going to just make it a little bit larger so that you guys can see. So first of all, let's draw Joshua's um, information into a line graph. So first of all, for zero kilometers traveled, the cost is going to be zero rand. For 20 kilometers traveled, so once again, 20 kilometers traveled, the cost is gonna be 720. So that's about there. For 40 kilometers, it's going to be 1,440, which is more or less there. For 60 kilometers, it's 2,160. So let's say it's going to be about there. For 80 kilometers, 2,880. So let's say about there. For 100 kilometers, 3,600. 
for 120 kilometers, 4,320. So let's say more or less there. Then for 140 kilometers, it's 5,040. And for 160 kilometers, it's 5,760. So let's say about there. Now, please excuse me, I'm going to attempt to draw a straight line freehand on this tablet. Okay, that should do. Just gives you an idea, but please, in a paper, use a ruler. Then for me, a set of data for, now at this point, just quickly pay attention. Even if you travel zero kilometer, you are still liable for that 150 Rand. Therefore, her graph will not start at zero. Then for 20 kilometers, it's 790. So let's say it's about there. For 40 kilometers, it's 1,430. So it's about there. Then for 60 kilometers, it's 2,070. For 80 kilometers, it's 2,710. For 100, it's 3,350. For 120 kilometers, it's 3,990. For 140, it's 4,630. And then for 160 kilometers, it's 5,270. So it's more or less about there. Okay, there we go. So there we have question 1.2 answered. For question 1.3, show the break even point on your graph. The gelijk break punt. Okay. So now since this was drawn freehand, you cannot see the um the break even point very clearly, but it's going to be between 20 and 40 kilometers so more or less over there and you can indicate it using an x using a circle but just make sure that it's nice and clear for question 1.4 what does the break even point on your graph mean okay now for that let's continue a little bit downwards so a break even point indicates where your um let's say cost for mia equals to the cost for Joshua. So that means at that specific point between 20 and 40 kilometers, the cost for hiring Mia's car or the cost for hiring Joshua's taxi will be exactly the same. In Afrikaans, the gelijkbreek punt beteken dat die kost is vir Mia se kar hier sal precies die selfde wees as die koste om Joshua se taxi te hier. For question 1.4, uh, 5, sorry. Which option should the French choose if they plan on traveling 135 kilometers? Provide a reason for your answer. So at this stage, you can actually go back to your graph and have a look let's have a look if you travel extremely short distance so if you travel say between 20 to 40 kilometers then it is cheaper using joshua's taxi service if you travel a far distance then it is actually cheaper to use maya's car hire so the question states if you plan to travel 135 kilometers so 135 is going to be more or less between these two now between those two joshua and mia's services mia's service will be cheaper so you can say you will make use of mia's service 
it is the cheaper, oh, let me just include. It is the cheaper option. So very, very important. The question says provide a reason for your answer. If you only say Mia's car service, you will not be awarded full marks. So for the Afrikaanse kinders, jy kan sê Mia's car dienst, want dit is die goedkoper optie. Baie belangrik, as jy nie rede vir jou antwoord gee nie, gaan jy nie vol punte kry nie. Mia's car dienst is die rechte antwoord, maar jy gaan slechts 1 punt kry, want jy het nie rede vir jou antwoord gegee nie. Now before we continue, just quickly have a look here. That question 1 counts 19 marks and it includes cognitive levels 1 two, three. Okay, so level one, two, and three. So for those of you who attended the previous webinar two weeks ago will know exactly what I refer to, but it is extremely important to see how the cognitive levels are integrated with each question. Now, before I continue, I just want to see if there are any questions regarding this um, question. Uh, gaan daar Afrikaanse CCB's nie ongelukkig nie, maar ek gaan my best probeer om vir jou vandagse vraag en antwoorde te vertaal. Um, Ma'am, why aren't you using the answers from the previous table? Okay, so you will see that the previous, um, the table in your answer sheet has 0, 10, 50, 100 and 150 kilometers, where the graph given to us counts in 20s, the distance. So just to make it easier and just to make sure that our dots are plotted accurately, I went ahead and I created a second table that um, makes use of the distances as given to us in our table. So you can make use of the, the, the table in the answer sheet. It is completely up to you. It will not be wrong. For question 1.2, if your dots are a bit off, so if your dots are a bit off, you will still be awarded marks for your headings, uh, for plotting the break-even point, but be aware that if it influences the shape of your graph, so if it's suddenly no longer a straight line but a curved line, you will lose marks. Um, let's see, any other questions? What if there is no break point on your graph? Okay, so geen gelijk break point of no break even point is, uh, if there are no break even points on your graph, then you just indicate it as such. So they won't ask you to indicate a break even point if there isn't one. So if they were to ask something which is highly unlikely, maybe just mention that in your graph there is none. And then bear in mind, if they ask you to show the break-even point and there is none, then it might also be due to the fact that you've made an error in drawing your graph. Okay, so let's continue with question two. Henny needs a new phone. He can choose between the following options. VAT of 15% is calculated or is included in each of the options. So VAT is BTV van 15%. Question 2.1. Does Henny need to pay a deposit before taking any of the cell phone contracts? Let's have a look in the information given to us over here. You will find that all the information is given to us here. There is no mention of a deposit. Helen noem niks van a deposit only. So therefore, the answer will be no. And they don't ask you to give a reason. So a simple no would suffice. Question 2.2, determine the total amount that Henny will pay if he chooses the second option. So Henny kies die tweede optie, wat is die totale bedrag wat hy gaan betaal? Now if we zoom in just a little bit, you will see that Henny is going to pay this 949 Rand for 24 months. Just have a look there, 24 months and this is the amount that he will be paying. So your calculation will be 949 multiplied by 24 months, that gives you an answer of 22,776 rand. Okay, quite simple and straightforward, easy to marks. Question 2.3. 
determine how much more he will pay for the third option rather than for the second option per month. So extremely important, not the total cost. It is needed to total cost. I will not know what is the verschil in cost between option 2 and 3 per month. So option 3 is more expensive at 999 Rand. Option 2 is less expensive at 949 Rand. If we subtract the two, the difference is, mm, let me see, 800, no, that's not right. So the difference will be 50 Rand. There we go. Then for question 2.4 or 2.3 uh, that we answered, 2.4, which option would you suggest for Henny? Provide a reason for your answer. Now, this is one of those fun questions. Which one would you suggest? So that means that there is many possible answers. If you motivate your answer correctly, then you will be awarded two marks. You can say, for example, oh, um, you will choose option three since the number of minutes, the data, as well as the free SMSs is a lot more than option one and two. If you say, for example, oh, option one, because option one is the cheapest. Or you can say option two, because it is not the cheapest, but you get a little bit more data. So any option is or any option will be considered correct as long as you can motivate it correctly. And that is why it is important for you to focus on the reason that you provide. Question 2.5. Salsi was advertising a promotion stating that Henny can choose their option and not pay VAT. How much will their option cost monthly? So extremely important, Salsi is this option here, option three of 999 Rand. Now this 999 Rand al um, already includes VAT. Therefore, we are going to say 999 Rand multiplied by Oh, sorry, not multiply, divide. 1,15, which is one, or the entire price, including the 15% of the VAT. And that gives you an answer of 868 and 70 cents. Alternatively, you could have said, 15% of 115, remember we place it over 115 because 900, 999 Rand is the entire whole price, including an additional 15% VAT. You multiply that by 990. Let's just calculate that quickly. It gives you an answer of 130 and a rounded off decimal of 30 cents. So then if you say 999 Rand, subtract this 130 Rand. And remember on my calculator, I'm going to leave the original decimal. It is going to give you an exact same answer of 868 and rounded off 70 cents. So you will see that the answers, they are identical. So you can make use of either of these methods. Once again, just before we continue, level one, two, three cognitive levels, they are all tested in the 10 marks included in question two. Okay, I'm not going to provide um, time for questions after each um, questions since we are going to be running out of time and I would like to cover as much of this paper as possible. Question three, the airline that Henny and his friends wants to use to fly to Cape Town has the following restrictions regarding luggage. Every person on the, pla on, on the plane is allowed one carry-on bag and one checked-in bag. The weight of each bag can be seen below. So any hulle gaan van hierdie vlugleerderij gebruik maak, hulle mag twee tasse op die, uh, op die vliegtuig vat, a carry-on wat hulle in die vliegtuig self vat, as ook a check-in baggage wat hulle vooraf ingeen. Then let's continue. 3.1.1. 1. 1. 
how much kilograms can each person take on the plane? Okay, so this is quite simple. They are allowed to take seven kilograms as a carry-on and an additional 23 kilograms as a checked-in luggage. If we add those two values, it gives you an answer of 30 kilograms. Okay, so that's a simple level one question. Question 3.1.2. What is the formula of the hand luggage that can um, that each person can take on the flight? Use the following, uh, sorry, not the formula, the volume of the hand luggage that each person can take on the, on the flight. Use the following formula to answer the question. Provide your answer in cubic meters and round off your answer to two decimal places. So here they give you a formula to make use of. So first of all, Let's copy that onto our answer sheet. Length times breadth times the height. Then let's have a look. The information we should use for the hand luggage. Um, provide, okay, so here we go. For the hand luggage, they provide us with these dimensions. Okay. Then we can multiply that by saying, 48 times 34 times a height of 23. So 48 times 34 times 23 gives you an answer of 37,536. Now remember, this is the volume measured in cubic centimeters, but the answer states that you should give your answer in cubic meters. Therefore, I included this um, conversion diagram here at the top. So most of you who listened in to previous webinars will um, remember that we did cover this and you would also notice that I took this from the previous webinar. So if we are going to move from centimeters to meters, as we gaan omskakel van centimeters na meters, soos wat hulle in ons vraag vir ons verduidelik, gaan ons deel met a we are going to divide by, um, let's quickly see. No, that's incorrect. Sorry, guys. Uh, we are not going to be dividing by 100 because then we ha will have to divide by more because we are then going from cubic cubic centimeters to cubic meters. So let's quickly redo this. Let me just show you how it's going to be to be make it less confusing for you guys make the conversion beforehand. So that means uh, 48 centimeters divided by 100, because we are going from centimeters to meters, will be 0, 0,48. And then we multiply with, say, the length of 34 centimeters divided by 100 is going to be 0, 0,34 meters. And then we multiply it by the breadth of 23. Now 23 centimeters divided by 100 gives you 0, 0,23, okay. And then these values are now all uh, conf um, changed to a measurement in meters. Therefore, if we multiply it now, we are going to get an answer of 0, 0,04 cubic meters. So this is a lot easier than trying to convert a measurement from cubic centimeters to cubic meters, okay? Because then it's uh, you will not only be dividing by 100, by you will, but you will be dividing by six zeros rather. Okay, Go, going forward to question 3.1.3. Why is there no measurement showing on the checked in bag? So that means over here, you will see that there is no measurement indicated. This means that the luggage can be any size. So the width, the length, the breadth, the height, everything can be different as long as it does not exceed the weight of 23 kilogram. So it can be any shape or size. Question 3.1.4. What is the weight of the checked in bag in pounds if one pound equals 0, 0.453592 kilograms? So, you must ons omskakel van imperies 
um, tussen die twee verschillende eenheden. Zo so kom ons kijk gaan gauw hier, hulle gee vir ons die massa van 1 pond na kilogram. Hulle sê ook dat een check-in bag mag 23 kilogram of nie meer dan 23 kilogram weeg. So the calculation we are going to make use of is to say the amount in kilogram, which is the 23 over here, and we are going to divide it by the decimal value given to us, 0, 0,453592. The answer we obtain from this is 50 pounds. Okay. Let's quickly see if there are any questions. 50 Rand, thank you for that. But what about the phone trending? That would also be an acceptable answer if you motivate it correctly. So if for pre, uh, question two, if you are going to say you want to choose the second option because it is the trending phone, then just make sure you motivate that correctly. I calculate the question 2.3. The answer is 100 Rand. I'll double check that for you. But if you said 999, subtract it. Let's quickly have a look. 999 minus 949, it should give you an answer of 50 Rand. Then let's see any other questions. No other questions. Great. Okay, so let's continue to the rest of question three. The following shows how the inside of the plane looks like, as well as how the seats are divided. Question 3.2.1. Henny and his friends are flying economy class. In which part of the plane will they sit? In the front or at the back? So then you're supposed to have a look at the image here. You will see, let me just get my highlighter. Business class is in the front and economy class is in the back. Therefore, your answer will be they will be sitting at the back. Okay, question 3.2.2. Why do you think they are not flying business class? Once again, guys, this is a what do you think? So that you is quite important. If they ask your opinion, make sure you motivate and explain your answer clearly as you will then most likely be awarded marks. So you can say um, that is the dear too expensive. Um, let's see. Mm, I'm going to check here. Too expensive. Any other reason? Because you can say um, there are too many, so maybe the amount of seats in business class is not enough. So any reason as long as it is motivated properly. Question 3.2.3. .3. The smaller seats in the airplane are numbered from one or from six onward. Why do you think they are not numbered from one? Now, this is a tricky question and you will need to go and look at your image. Now, it's quite small, but if you count from the first seat, one, two, okay, let's say, let me get my pen. One, two, three, four, five. You will see that the first five rows are all business class seats. So the smaller seats, starting from row six is all the economy class seats. So you can say for question 3.2.3, .3, business class is numbered from one. Economy class is then numbered from six. So economy class is numbered from six onward. 3.2.4, Haney's seat number is 8D. Is he sitting left or right of the passage? Okay, so now again, let's have a look at all the information provided in this image. If he is sitting in seat 8D, let's have a look. D, as indicated here, will be on the right of the passage. Question 3.2.5, what is Henny's friend's seat number if he is sitting where it is indicated on the map? Okay, so Henny's friend here is an arrow indicating as to where Henny is sitting here. I already uh, circled it with a black circle. Now, I'm not going to take too much time with this question. What you are supposed to do is then to count from the front to the back to determine the 
row that he is sitting in. So we know six is here the first in economy class. So it's going to be six, seven, eight, but it's extremely small. So you are going to continue. And then you will see that he is sitting right to the left. So the seat that's entirely to the left, which means he's going to be sitting on a seat that is numbered A. Now, if you count it backwards and you know that he's sitting in a seat numbered A, you will see that he is sitting in seat 20. 6a. Now, just as I've explained, it is called a bike line, or it's a sick on the so I'm all summoned like the tell, so I could dominate for a read for you. Question 2.6 Explain how Henny's friend will be able to get to Henny. Now, this is once again a question where we will accept any relevant answer. Now, the example I included for today is to go left past two seats. Walk straight ahead past 19 rows. Henny will be sitting in the chair to your right in the 20th row from your row. So what I mean by this is any possible answer. If you want to describe the route that he is going to walk a little bit different, it is still fine as long as you elaborate enough and your information is correct. Question 3.2.7. The seat in business class is 72 inches wide. How wide is it in centimeters if one inch equals 2,54 centimeters? So let's quickly have a look. Our calculation for this is going to take 72 inches and we are going to multiply that by the conversion given to us in centimeters. So, ons gaan die hoeveelheid inches vermenigvuldig met die centimeter waarde wat vir ons hier omgeskakel is. If we multiply this, we get an answer of 182,88 centimeters. Okay, so I hope all of you are still following along. We're nearly done with this question. Question 3.2.8. How many business class seats will fit along a seven meter long passage without space, spaces between them? So now we are going to make use of the, of the ans answer that we calculated in our previous question, this 182,88 centimeters. We are going to say seven meters divided. Now, extremely important, seven is measured in meters and this answer is measured in centimeters. So first, if we convert this 182,88 centimeters to a value in meters, centimeters to meters, we are going to divide. So that means the measurement in meters will be 1,8288. Okay, if we divide these two values both then in meters, we will get an answer of 3,8. Now, it's extremely important, guys. You cannot fit 0, 0,8 chairs. You can fit three chairs, but not 0, 0,8 chairs in a row. So it's extremely important that you round your answer off to a whole number. Now, there is not enough space for you to round up to four chairs because there is not enough space as we've calculated in the previous question. Therefore, you are going to round down to three chairs. I hope that explanation makes sense. Question 3.2.9. If their flight leaves at 9.35, how long will they, uh, is their flight if they land at 11.40? So calculation, we are going to take our landing time of 11.40. The tijd wat ons land is al 40. And from that, we are going to subtract the time that we departed. Ons trak af die tijd wat ons weggetrak het. So 40 minus 35 gives you five minutes, 11 minus nine gives you an answer of two. Therefore, the flight is two hours and five minutes. Okay, now we have about 15 minutes left and two questions remaining. So let's see if we can at least cover question four before we run out of time. It's a question on finances. Question four, 
Henny realizes that he, the holiday will cost more than his budget. Now, budget is your begroting. He decides to make more money by cutting the grass of people's homes over weekends. Here is his financial plan. So, his financial plan will be under for you. His expenses, say, outgaves, sluit in, hire of a lawnmower, petrol for lawnmower, petrol for transport, and his income, say, inkomstes, sluit in his payment per lawn. So he gets 70 rand per lawn that he mows. Then Henny can mow the lawns of four houses with one tank of petrol. So that's important information, and it's important that you don't simply just read over it. You need to there we go. So four tanks or four, uh, four lawns with one tank. Question 4.1. Determine Henny's total expenses and income over a weekend if he mows eight lawns. So what is Henny's total income and uitgaves as I would have week eight times the grass snijden? Now, first of all, let's do his income. If he charges 70 rand per lawn and he mows eight lawns, we are going to say 70 times 8, and that is going to give you an answer of 560. For his expenses, he is going to hire a lawnmower for 200 Rand for the entire weekend. He is going to uh, purchase petrol for transport, so it's also 120 Rand for an entire weekend. And then here is where the catch comes in. 35 Rand of petrol per tank. Now remember, he is mowing eight lawns and he needs one tank for each four lawns. So we are going to purchase two tanks for the weekend. If we all add all of this information together, it gives you an answer of 390. Okay. Question 4.2. How many lawns must he mow in order to make a profit? So let's see. If his income for eight lawns is 560 Rand and his expenses is 390 Rand for eight lawns, Let's have a look. We are going to say 70 Rand times, say, 6 gives you an answer of 250. So this is his income for six loans. Now, it will be a trial and error question, but it would be helpful if we say for four loans, Let's say 200. For four loans, it is going to cost him 355 rand. So he will need to mow at least six or more loans in order to make a profit. Let's go to question 4.3. Determine the percentage increased in cost of petrol if the chance, um, if the if it changes from 120 Rand to 180 Rand. So the percentage increase from 120 to 180 Rand. Now we do that by saying the increased price subtracted the old price. And we place that over our old price of 120. And then because we want our answer as a percentage, we multiply it by 100. If you type that into your calculator, your answer is 50%. Question 4.4. Determine how much he will pay for the hire of a lawnmower if the price increases with 32%. So 200 Rand which he is currently paying for the hire of a lawnmower, plus an additional 32%. Now, if you type that bracket section into your calculator, it is going to give you an answer of, let's see, 
64 Rand. And therefore, he is now going to pay 264 Rand in order for the uh, increased price to hire the lawnmower. Question five. Henny is going on holiday with four friends. The house that they will live in has four rooms. Therefore, one of them will have to sleep on the couch. Question 5.1. What is the probability? Now, in Af Afrikaans is probability waarschijnlijkheid. What is the waarschijnlijkheid? What is the probability that Henny will sleep on the couch? So, first of all, there are five friends which one of them will need to sleep on the couch. So the probability for Henny to sleep on the couch is one over five. What is the probability that one of the other friends will sleep on the couch? So excluding Henny, the number of friends that remain is four and there are still five friends. So the probability for one of them to sleep on the couch is four over five. Question 5.3. Suppose they draw straws to make the choice. They draw straws without replacement. So hulle trak loekies sonder om die loekie terug te sit. What is the probability that Henny will sleep on the couch if he draws forth? Provide that all of his friends then drew before him are sleeping in rooms. So let's see. Three friends have already chosen. There are two people left to choose a room or a couch. So there are two possible options left where Henny has to take one of those two options. Therefore, he has half a chance to sleep on the couch as much as he have, has half a chance of sleeping in a room. Question 5.3.2. What is the probability that Henny will sleep on the couch provided that he draws third? and the first person that drew is sleeping on the couch. Remember, there are five friends where there, there is room enough for four of them to sleep on a bed and only one couch. So if the first person already drew the couch, then there is zero chances that Henny will also draw an option or draw a stick or a straw to sleep on the couch. So you can say zero, zero in words or no chance. Okay guys, so that is all for us for today. I am going to allow a minute or so just to have a look at some of the questions that were asked. So please remember to submit your questions in the question box. If I do not answer them now, then I will get back to you via email. So please keep an eye on your emails. Thank you so much for joining us in on today's session. Um, we are quickly going to have a look at some questions. So questions. Can you say he'll have to wait till the flight ends? Um, I'm not sure whether that is applicable to any question. Let's have a look. Explain how Henny's friend will be able to get to Henny. Uh, unfortunately, we expect you there to say how he will walk from his seat to Henny's seat. So uh, an answer saying that he will wait till the flight ends will not be an appropriate answer. Question 3.2.8. As I've explained, remember, we cannot create an additional 0, 0,2 space to make um, to create space for four chairs. So question 3.2.8 for the learner who asked the question regarding that. Please make sure that you round off to three chairs. So they will rather be 0, 0,8, um, I think it's meters left, but you cannot create an additional 0, 0,2 meters in order to fit a fourth chair into that space. Okay, and then question five, there are four friends, not five. Let's have a look. Henny is going on holiday with four friends. So in, to in total, four friends plus Henny gives you five friends and therefore our probability is based on five friends. 
How can Henny sleep on the couch when he has paid? That does seem a little bit unfair, but I think uh, drawing straws does make all the choices a little bit more fair. Um, you mentioned there are five friends. The question men mentions four friends. Okay, as I've explained, Henny is going on holiday with four friends. So in total, they are five friends. Okay. Let's see, I think that is all questions that I can see here, but I will cover all the questions. So if I perhaps missed your questions, keep an eye on the um, on your email because then I will get back to you um, via email. Okay, so thank you so much guys for joining in today. I hope that all of you have learned something and then enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.